Welcome and thank you for coming this morning. My name is Doug Watt. I am the Senior Technology Product Manager at ZEI. Uh, I don't know if you guys were at the Devs on Stage presentation last night, but I am from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and I just realized how much of a stereotypical Canadian I am. They were up there talking about the cold weather. We had a blizzard already last week. I woke up to about an inch of snow on Monday morning. And then they started talking about curling and hockey. And you can check those boxes off too because I play both of those sports. So true blue Canadian for sure. This is my first time at Tableau Conference and I'm also presenting. So this week has been a little overwhelming for me, a bit of sensory overload, but it's been a great time. Uh, a little bit about my background. I've got about 15 years in various technology roles, the last 10 of which have been at ZEI as a product manager, and really worked with our customers and our internal teams to roll out two instances, implementations of Tableau. And that's what we'll talk about today, is how we rolled it out for our customers and how we're also being successful using Tableau internally at ZEI. Here's a quick little agenda. I'll give you an overview of what ZI is and what we do. And then we'll talk about our two stories. And then talk a little bit about what's next for ZI. And then have some questions if you guys have any. So ZI is an oil and gas technology and services company. And our traditional business model is really providing value in those three that are highlighted upstream, midstream, and downstream operations for oil and gas. And if you think about upstream, that's the production. That's getting the gas or oil out of the ground. The transportation is taking it from those wells to a facility, whether that's on a pipeline, in a truck, on rail. And at those facilities, they're going to turn it into usable, usable product for a consumer. And then from there, it's going to go out to the distribution network. Again, that's going to be a bunch of pipelines and trucks, and then eventually out to your homes or to a gas station. In these three areas, verticals that we work with, we work with a bunch of key personas. Guys like field operators, foremen, production accountants, production engineers, and those personas are going to come back later in the presentation, so just keep those in mind. Here is what ZI does. So we've got five distinct lines of business. Field, that's a body shop. We can supply you the operators to run your wells. Automation is a really key point of this presentation, and that's all of the hardware, the devices, the sensors that we can install, design, and engineer for our customers. It really helps them to automate their wells. Measurement is another service, so they can go out and calibrate and maintain those devices that we install. Artificial lift is a unique one for us. It's other types of equipment, but it's really about assisting our customers in producing oil or gas. So often there's extra technology employed at a well to help get the product out of the ground. And each one of those lines of business is going to feed data one way or another into our platform. And that's really the backbone of our IIoT. And then on top of that sits the software. And that's the group that I work in. This is where we've got our customer-facing implementation of Tableau. Here's some real-life examples. So the one on the far right is one of those measurement technicians that I talked about. He's actually collecting a gas sample at this well. He'll take it back to one of our labs, have it analyzed so we know the exact molecular breakdown of that gas. And that's important because he needs to get it into that box right there. That's a device on our network. That's a flow computer. So it is calculating the volume of gas that's coming out of this well. And that would be put on our platform so you can see it remotely. This one here is one of our silver jacks. That's that artificial lift technology. So again, we will design and install and manufacture these and then put that on our network as a device as well. 
And the neat thing about what we can do is it's not just that device and seeing it, but you can also remotely control it. So speed it up, slow it down, turn it on, turn it off, that sort of thing. And where that helps our customers is it reduces costly trips out to the site. Uh, one of the most dangerous things an oil and gas company can do is have people driving out to their wells. That's your biggest health and safety risk. Here's another good example of how we automate an oil and gas field. So in this example, there's three wells, and we're going to have a device at each one of those wells measuring the production. This other one that looks a little bit different, that's another type of artificial lift. It's a plunger lift, so that would also be hooked up to our network, and so we can control it. In the background is going to be some separators, so they'll take the liquids out of the gas. Again, we're going to measure the performance of that separator, what's coming in, what's coming out, the volumes. It'll then go into a pipeline, and we'll measure the gas as it goes into the pipeline. And the liquids are going to get stored in these tanks. And again, those are going to be devices on our network where we will monitor things like tank levels. And so we can alarm our customers when it's almost full. They can dispatch a truck to empty it out and prevent any sort of costly environmental spills. This is a very brief diagram of how we do it. We'll connect our devices that we manufacture. We'll also connect to any other device out in the field. So we're agnostic, we're hardware agnostic. You can use ours or someone else's. We'll also hook into other historians to bring in data. And then we land that all up in our historian up here. Uh, what we're using today is Oracle Enterprise. And that is the primary data source for Tableau. And Tableau lives up in here in this Anywhere Access. <clears throat> so they can log in to our platform, see our traditional data that we're collecting for them, the traditional functionality. But that's where we've put Tableau. And today we're using Tableau uh, 10.2, both server and desktop. And we use this infrastructure to collect quite a bit of data. We have about 20,000 devices. And those 20,000 devices have about 1.5 million sensors configured on them. And they generate about 51 million readings per day. Um, a lot of this information is collected every five minutes and then sent back to us on an hourly basis. That has been our traditional service, but we're already getting pressure from customers to move more into a big data space. And we've had requests for sub one minute data, uh, some sub 10 second data. We've even had to turn away a customer around one second data. But we're already starting to see that trend to move to more of a big data play. Uh, we do all of this typically through cellular or satellite networks. Uh, we have private VPNs with most of the major telcos in the world. Uh, we are doing this in 25 different countries. And that's really on three partners. We have one large multinational services company that's partnered with us. And then two smaller partners, one in Southeast Asia and one in Latin America. And I'll talk a little bit more about how they're also using Tableau on our platform. So <clears throat> I've mentioned ZI Access a couple of times. That is our platform. That is where we have embedded Tableau. And it is a web-based SCADA platform. And what SCADA stands for is Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. <clears throat> and we have about 600 companies using this platform and about 4,000 active users that are logging in every day to remotely view their wells, <clears throat> do some trending, set clear acknowledge alarms, and also do that remote control that I talked about earlier. So that's enough about ZI. Let's talk about why we put Tableau into our platform. 
We collect a lot of data for our customers, and our challenge is presenting it to our customers in a meaningful way so that they can make the right decision. Our goal when we did this was really about getting that right data to the right person at the right time to make the right decision. And if you remember those personas I talked about earlier, they all look at the same data. So whether I'm an operator or a foreman or a production engineer, it's the same data set, but the way they like to look at it is different based on their role. And so that's what we've created is a bunch of persona-based dashboards. Operators will look at what is happening now or what happened last week. A production foreman is going to look at that same level of data, but they're going to want to know everything for their entire field. And are, am I producing this week based on the targets that were set for me? A production accountant will work in a monthly cycle. What happened last month? What have we done so far this month? Have I got all of the data I need to report back to different regulatory bodies to pay royalties, which is big in Canada? Have I got all the information I need for my partners to make sure that they're paying me the correct amounts? Am I missing any data? Uh, a production engineer, they're going to look at the lifetime of a well. Is this well producing as we predicted when we drilled it? What's been my total production? What's been my decline in my production? And so we've created different dashboards, and I'll show a few today to uh, give you a flavor of the different personas. This is one that we built for a foreman. So this is a bunch of wells that they've got producing, and this is showing their gas flow rate, which is really their cash register. They're producing gas, that's what they're selling, that's what they're getting paid on. And clearly we can see something happened here on the 27th. Now before we had Tableau, there was one of two ways they could get this information. It was log into the application every day, download a CSV, and do some of their own trending like this, which is pretty painful to do. The other one would have been to wait for that monthly cycle and have a production accountant catch it and ask, what happened? You know, we had some pretty stable production for the first 20 days on this graph, and then something happened on that day, and then we were good the rest of the month. By then, it's too late for them to catch and correct any problems. So putting a visualization like this into ZI Access, it's really a couple of clicks, and now they can see right away how they're performing. The next reason that we embedded Tableau into ZI Access was really about increasing our speed to market. Before we put Tableau in, there was one way to get something built like this, and that was to go through our developers. And they are up to their eyeballs in project requests. And to bring something like this to them is very disruptive to the projects that they are working on. Plus, we're limited in the type of tools that we had in the platform, and to build something like this was next to impossible and would have taken several months. This really was three days to build. And the reason that we can build these a lot quicker is we now give the tools to product managers, product owners, subject matter experts, because the challenge is understanding the data and the story you're trying to tell or the question you're trying to answer. It's not Tableau. Tableau is the easy part. So this is an example for an operator, and it combines a lot of good information for them. Here is their real time, so what is happening right now, the latest data coming in from that device. Yesterday's information, so you can do a quick comparison. It's also doing some math, some basic calculations in here where it's taking out the gas that they use to run their different equipment out at site so I can get an actual clear picture on how much I'm producing. And then it's also using some historical data from our historian to give you a trend. And so this really gives them a good picture 
of their entire operation on one screen. The last reason we looked at integrating Tableau into ZI Access was to support our subscription price. So we are software as a service. You pay us a monthly fee based on how many devices you have on our network. And we are a premium price product. And so we're always looking for ways to add value to our application. And Tableau was one of them. Uh, about two years ago when we launched this, we did this in conjunction with a few other releases, but used it as our justification for a small price increase, which results in about a million dollars a year. So it was a quick ROI for us to put Tableau into our application. The other reason, um, or the other way that we're generating revenue is now we're also building custom dashboards for customers. So once they've seen the canned ones, they come to us with more sophisticated requests and ask us to build custom dashboards. And all of the examples I've shown you today are actually custom dashboards we've built for people. This is an example for a gas marketer. And her job is to make sure that they are meeting their production nominations is what it's called. So they are selling gas to one of those midstream facilities and they have to make sure that they're selling as much as they said they would and they're delivering as much product as they said they would. Their challenge was they don't own 100% of their wells. They only have an ownership percentage. And so the total gas that was being produced wasn't all of theirs to sell. And there's no real easy way for them to know that because of each well having its own percentage of ownership. And so we created this dashboard and the top line shows their total production. The red line shows their gross or their net production. Um, we also rolled it up by their different areas so that they can see which fields produce the most gas and which fields produce the most gas in which they own. I'm going to stop here. We're going to log into ZI Access and I'll show you a couple of real life examples if I can get this over here. Perfect. So this is actually ZI Access. We flip over to the Analytics tab. That's where we've got Tableau embedded. I'm just going to hide this guy so it's a little bit bigger for us all. And so this was a custom dashboard that we built for some operators. Now, I've gone in and manipulated the data just so we're not looking at live information. But really, what this dashboard is showing them is a list of 10 or so wells the key sensors that they measure or monitor. And then uh, they, they click through it, they can see the trend on specific values. You know, if there's something that they're interested in and they want to see, you know, they've got the real-time um, interactivity so they can customize their view. Uh, we always show the first three. Those are the most important ones in a well. Some of the other things we're doing is, of course, we're highlighting anything that's in an alarm state. So in this example here, we've got these yellow, orange colored ones, those are alarms, so there's a visual cue. And the other thing that we've done for them, and I need to make sure I pick the right guy, is showing that alarm history. And how that helps them is if I'm getting an alarm from this device all the time. And you can see this one here on the static pressure is alarming quite a bit. So before they had this dashboard, it was kind of just, I think we're having too many alarms or that there's something going on. This gives them visibility to see the frequency of their alarms. And that's helpful for two reasons. One is either there is a real problem here that they've not addressed, they just clear the alarm and go on about their day, and then it's going to alarm again. Or they've set that alarm wrong. It's too tight. 
the configuration, the high and low levels. So it's always tripping. And if you're in a position where it's always tripping, eventually the guys are going to ignore it, and then you're going to be in a problem when there's actually something wrong. So that's just a couple of you know, quick examples to kind of give you the, the look and feel of how we've embedded it into our platform. I'm going to hop back here. One of the main reasons that we were successful in rolling out these dashboards to our customers is having advisory groups. And we like to do them for any major release that we're doing. Uh, getting that direct feedback from customers is invaluable. And we like to do it in person, get them all gathered around a room, and really listen to their feedback. They know their business better than we do, most of the time. And getting them involved in the process early really helps with their sense of ownership of the application. They're gonna be your product champion if they can see their feedback incorporated into something new. Uh, we like to do it kind of like an agile software development We'll build a prototype or two, bring them in, show them what we've got, get their feedback, incorporate it into whatever we're building, whether it's a dashboard or uh, a new feature, new module, and then bring them back and show them that we're listening. Um, the one thing that I would suggest, if possible, uh, is do it in person and have everybody with their own laptops, just like at all the training sessions that we've been doing this week. Getting them hands-on is going to give you a lot better results and more feedback. And the other thing that we've noticed, too, is the customers that come to the advisory groups, they get to learn from other people, just like we're doing here today. But even though they're technically competitors, it's a pretty small market. It's a small user community. And learning how someone else does their business is an additional benefit for a customer who comes to an advisory group. That is really all that we've got for the customer-facing implementation. And we're going to switch gears now and talk about how we've been successful internally with Tableau at ZI. So we have two separate Tableau instances, one for our customers and one internally. And never the two shall meet, really. Um, and we started using Tableau at ZI for a few very important reasons. As a product manager, uh, I was responsible. I'm not so much anymore. We've got another guy doing that. But we had a monthly reporting cycle where we had to present our financial performance for our line of business and some other key metrics. And it was a painful process every month. It took me somewhere between three and four days every month to collect the information and present it. And eventually I got fed up and I knew that there had to be a better way. And we standardized on Tableau. Um, so that has been great. The other thing is it's really hard for us to have credibility in the market if we aren't using these types of tools and we're trying to sell them to our customers. So I wanted everyone who was customer facing, all the product managers, all the sales team, to really understand the value that we were getting out of Tableau and analytics and visualizations so that they could then speak intelligently to our customers about it. So the internal rollout of Tableau started very small. Um, we were in the middle of the project to embed it into ZI Access. And again, I was caught in that th three days a month trying to get my reporting done, which was painful. It involved logging into a Microsoft Access database to pull information out of Dynamics. And then I had to open up an Excel workbook, run some macros to pull the data out of Access into Excel so I could create some pivot tables and it drove me nuts. And 
I thought, you know what, I'm going to take that raw data instead of going through that process, let's just put it directly into Tableau and see what I can do. And I did it for a couple of reasons. One is I needed the practice. I was new to Tableau, so I wanted to play around. And I wanted to start <clears throat> with a data set that I was familiar with. And the other selfish reason, <clears throat> excuse me, was it was solving my problem. I did not want to be doing that manual process again. And so after I had built a few dashboards, got comfortable with Tableau, what I was showing, the accuracy of the data, and everything was good, I started to share them with the other product managers in those monthly update meetings. And then once they saw what I was doing, they're like, well, why can't I get my data in here? And so we worked with a few groups at ZI, some in IT, some in operations and finance, and we started getting them set up. And then from there, things really just exploded. And so those are the teams today that are using Tableau. And we'll talk a little bit about each of them and, and how they're using Tableau. So the first team, obviously, was our finance team. Um, from the dashboards I built, they took it and ran with it. And they've been really great. They have taken what I've done, improved it, added new dashboards. They've gone out and talked to all the internal users to figure out what they need to see to help run their business. They've even added a completely new data set around expense reporting. So we're getting really close to be doing things like EBITDA reporting into Tableau. Uh, you'll see there. There's a bit of a quote from our uh, VP of Finance. I'm going to read it all here for you, just so I don't screw that up. Um, I'm just going to get it here. So Tableau has been a great tool for our finance department. It has provided us with a singular, consistent platform that gives users access to their financial data anytime, anywhere they want without having to go through finance. It has enabled each business owner to view their data in new ways and gain better insights to their products, their business, and their customers. And so from there, we just kept rolling. Hmm. Let's see what happened here. There we go. The next group that really jumped on board was our platform team. So if you remember them from earlier. They're really all about device management. How many devices do we have in the field? How much data are they generating? How often are they calling in? How complex are they? And so that's what this dashboard is showing. The guys up here in this quadrant, those are the ones that we really like. There's lots of devices, lots of revenue, and they're very simple for us to support. The ones down here are just the opposite. And we're taking this data to look at updating our pricing model. So we had no way to know this before Tableau, or no easy way. And so not all nodes are created equal. And so now we're looking at value pricing based on things like complexity. This is one from our customer experience team. So they're all about revenue retention, customer retention, keeping devices on our network. And so they've come up with a few key metrics. And in this example, just so you know, five is good, one is bad. Um, things like how often they're logging into the platform. So are they actually using our services? The age of the asset, so that device that's out in the field, we know that they last seven to 10, maybe 12 years. So the older they get, the higher risk. And then there's one for communication. So I used to have a personal cell phone and a work cell phone. I put the personal one in the drawer, never looked at it, but was still paying the bill. That's really what this column is. Do they have a bunch of devices that they're paying us for, but they're not communicating into us? And so we roll all that up and give them 
just an overall score. And this really helps the customer experience team focus on who they should be talking to. So in this example here, um, Venturian, they're really high risk, 1.1, but it's only three devices. Let's not spend a lot of time there. Let's look at the one right above it where they've got 64 devices and a lot of revenue there and are at a, pretty, at a moderate risk. This is one from my team. And so we use Tableau and uh, the information we're collecting through Google Analytics and some, also some internal measurements around who our most active customers are. So those are good guys to talk to for advisory groups. Which pieces of our application are being used the most? And that helps us determine where to focus our investment. So is there a piece of the application that gets used all the time and we're not spending any money on enhancing and upgrading or addressing any defects that are in there? It also helps us in training and marketing. So if we've built something that we think is really cool and is gonna help our customers but they're not using it, that's a marketing campaign for us that we can start. And then there's some information about what technology is being used to access our platform. That helps our QA team decide what kind of tests they're gonna do. So, sorry BlackBerry, we're not gonna spend any time supporting that browser because next to no one is using it. Who's next? Our operations team. So in the US, we've got about 18 service centers and they do a lot of monthly, quarterly, semi-annual recurring work and to keep track of all of that work and what's been invoiced and what work's been done is quite difficult for the team. And we are kicking off a revenue assurance program to make sure that we are billing everything we're supposed to be billing. And they've built this dashboard as one of the tools to help them. Uh, if you look at this, anything that's in orange means we've got a problem. So there's information missing on a work ticket so we can invoice or we haven't set the invoice or we haven't rescheduled the job. So we completed it last month, we gotta do it again next month and they haven't done that step. There was no way to understand the scope of the problem until we had a dashboard like this. It also has some drill down capabilities so I can click on all of the orange ones and see the exact work tickets that have the problems. It's all broken out by service center. So now our GMs know exactly the health of their invoicing processes. This one is from our artificial lift team. So those guys that are creating that hardware to help lift the oil and gas out of the ground. They're gonna talk about their technicians and how much revenue they're generating. They're also doing some utilization metrics in Tableau. This one is from our IT team, just tracking tickets. Really helps them understand which offices are having problems. So do we have to hire new people? Do we have to do some training? Uh, our new director of IT didn't have this type of reporting. We've got the ticket tracking system, but there was no reports, but it didn't have a Microsoft SQL backend. So he just stuck Tableau on top of it, and now he's got the information he needs to run his team. This is the exciting stuff now. What is next for ZI? Um, as I said, we're an oil and gas technology company, and that has been really difficult over the last three years. When the oil and gas prices go down like they did in late 2015, um, we see the impact right away. You know, customers are not as busy, they're looking to cut costs, they'll remove some of their automation, they'll come and ask us for a big discount, um, customers aren't drilling new wells, so that means there's no new wells for us to put our technology on. And in 10 years, I've been through two of those already at ZI. And so we are looking for other opportunities in the IIoT space. And we have just started, I'd say within the last 12, 18 months, 
connecting our technology to a wide variety of things. Um, Slurpee machines, microbreweries, wind farms, uh, power generators, that's this example, I'll talk about it in a little bit more, uh, chicken farms, all sorts of things. Because really it doesn't matter what that end device is, we're really good at collecting that data and showing it to you remotely. And this is some power generators, and if you remember earlier, I was talking about our partners, and this is a dashboard from someone in Latin America. Their customer, so they're basically reselling our platform, their customer is in energy. And they've got a bunch of compressors, or sorry, not compressors, power generators. Power generators. And they're selling the electricity off of those generators. And so they needed a dashboard to help them display that. And where Tableau is really helpful is this allows us to create something that's not oil and gas specific. This can be for any vertical. And so when we talk about expanding into other industries, Tableau is going to be a key part of that because we can now build custom dashboards based on the industry. Our other partner who's in Indonesia, we're actually looking at setting a third instance of Tableau for them. They have some pretty strict data residency laws over there, so their data can't leave the borders of Indonesia. So we're looking at setting up a third Tableau server. We've already got our application, our infrastructure set up over there, and so layering on Tableau on top of that. The next thing for us is going to be more data. We've been really good at surrounding the well, getting well data, but there's so much more data in the industry. And by focusing just on the well, we're really limiting ourselves. And so these are a few of the data sets that we've identified that we want to start bringing in to marry up to our data set to provide more value to our customers. So that public data, there is information publicly available, you have to pay for it, for every well ever drilled. So there's about three quarters of a million wells in Canada. There is probably somewhere three or four times that many in the US. And so we collect data at 20,000 devices. What can we do with two million wells? Doing things like production comparisons. You know, how's my well today performing real time to those that are around me that aren't on ZEI's platform? Bringing in financial information from our customers. So starting to bring in some of their private data so we can do things like margin calculations. If we know it costs them $30 a barrel to produce oil and the price is 50, so bringing in the commodity price, we can now start to do some real-time margin or net backs as they call it in the industry calculations. So this would allow them to focus on their highest value wells rather than some of their highest producing wells because those aren't always the same. Reservoir information, that really speaks to another one of those verticals. If you remember one of my first slides, there was a drilling piece or an exploration piece. That's where this information comes in. So what could we do with the reservoir information, the gas or oil that's still underground, and figure out what the impact of drilling a new well in this field will be to my existing wells? Or help them determine where exactly to drill a new well. There's software out there that already does that, but there's no application or no platform that can bring it all together. Uh, same with the frac data. So when I was talking about that one second data resolution, that's these guys down here. They like big data. But what we're, I'd like to get to is what's the impact of fracking a well on the other wells that are around me? What I've shown you today has really been in the descriptive and diagnostic space. All we've done so far to, to date with Tableau is 
show you what happened, show you some trends, maybe show you what's happening right now, some real-time stuff. Most of that real-time stuff is our alarming, but we really want to move into predictive and prescriptive. So what is going to happen and what should you do about it? That one is going to be a bit of a challenge for us, but we recognize this is where we need to go. Back in July, we had a little strategy session, and we interviewed seven different groups within ZI, and five of them came back with prescriptive and predictive analytics. So we don't know how we're going to get there yet, but that's where we want to be. Now, we've started to do a little bit of exploration in this area. Uh, this, again, is an example from our Silver Jacks. So we collect a lot of data for them, and it's all nicely structured, and we have access to all of that information. And we have a partnership with a company back in Calgary that does machine learning and AI. And so we fed them all of our data, worked with them to try to identify some key problems or issues, maintenance issues, that you could have on one of our silver jacks. Um, and that, right now, we're just using it internally. We're still kind of in an R&D phase. Uh, some of the challenges we've seen with this is conflicting results, so it'll tell us two things, have a high probability that they're happening, but those two things are completely opposite. So we're still in the process of fine-tuning those algorithms, trying to figure out exactly uh, what we need to show customers. If you want more uh, information, this, most of this talk has been based off of a customer story that Annie Warman did for us. It's up on the Tableau website, uh, so go check that out. Uh, she did this back in April, and you can see we're, we're already growing. That's 1.3, and we're at about 1.5 million now. Uh, so that's a really great article to kind of summarize what we were talking about today. Just a, a quick little recap, and then I'm going to open it up for questions. Uh, really, adding Tableau into our platform for our customers provided us with three things. Um, adding insight to your data. It speeds up our time to market to get content out to customers, because now we're not limited to just developers. And it can add a lot of value to your application. And in our world as a software as a service provider, it really helps to drive revenue. Uh, to be successful, I think it's really about starting small, whether that's internally or externally. So we talked about a couple of personas and a couple of dashboards for each, and start there and watch it grow. Same internally, you know, solving my one problem to really get a toehold for Tableau, get some traction behind it, and really enable your business owners. And this one's important internally. We're still trying to figure out how to do it for our customers to allow them to build their own dashboards. But get the tools, get desktop in front of as many people as you can. Um, Unfortunately, I've been stuck in a little bit of the, well, you built this for me the first time, or you're the Tableau guy. Hey, can you fix this for me? Can you build something new for me? And I can do it, and I don't mind it, but really, the power of Tableau is allowing them to do it themselves. A license to desktop doesn't cost them that much. And they're going to get more out of their data, and frankly, they're not going to be waiting on me to get around to their request. Um, I'll leave you with one kind of parting thought. Um, to be successful, it takes time. You need to have patience and you've got to be persistent. I can remember the first time I started talking to executives at ZI around using 
a business intelligence, a visualization platform to support our internal reporting. And this was even before we had Tableau. It was another guy that um, we won't talk about. Um, that was June of 2013. And it took until January of 2016 for us to finally roll out our financial dashboards. It takes some time. You need to be persistent and you need to be patient, but you will have success. Because you can see that once someone starts using Tableau, it's going to explode across your company. That's me. That's my contact information. I would be happy to answer any questions you guys might have. I'm also on LinkedIn. Feel free to ping me. Um, and that's it. We'll open it up to see if there's any questions. Yes? The best feedback I got from an advisory group would have been when we showed a map to a group of operators. And we said, hey, look at this. We've got a great cool map. It shows you all your wells and how they're producing. He's like, I don't need a map. I know where my wells are. And so that is one of the things getting out of an advisory group is we think we can build some cool stuff, but if they're never going to use it, it doesn't matter. And so I think that was one of the key lessons I've learned from an advisory group is we were going down the complete wrong path for that specific persona. We thought, well, we've got this great map tool, but it did not interest them in the least. They're like, well, maybe someone who sits in an office all day and doesn't get their boots dirty might like it, but that's not for me. So that was probably the, the biggest thing I learned in this project. Yes? Yeah, there has certainly been some performance challenges. Um, so seeing Hyper a few days ago has got me really excited. Um, what we've had to do is actually limit the amount of historical data we'll show in a dashboard, in a visualization. So a lot of those historical trends, they'll only go back 90 days because for us to load, we keep seven years worth of high resolution data, it, it, to create an extract on that was impossible. So we've had to limit it. Now maybe with Hyper, there's maybe some opportunities there to expand it. Yes, so, yeah, so uh, the question was if customers need to see that data, what do we do? Uh, we typically will work with them to roll it up so it's not that raw level. We'll aggregate it into daily or weekly. And again, it also depends on the persona. So an engineer, we can actually roll it up into monthly information and they're satisfied with that. Yes? I kind of have two questions. Sure. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So the first question around um, kind of an ROI, we've seen it in a couple of ways. One was that price increase, so that was an immediate bump. Uh, the other one has been um, with our, our move down into the U.S., so we're traditionally Western Canadian provider. Um, we acquired some offices down here in the U.S., and we're a new entrant in the U.S. market. And where we've been able to leverage Tableau and to gain business is they've got other systems and they say, hey, we've got this really cool dashboard report and I'm not going to leave my current provider until you can provide the same functionality in yours. And so we use Tableau often to meet those requirements. And 
I don't have the, the metric around our dashboard around our node growth, our device growth, but in the US, over the last 24 months, it has almost tripled. And so I'd say about half of that tripling has been directly attributable to how we've been able to meet customers' needs with Tableau rather than having to build new software. For the second question around how did we market it, uh, there was a couple of different ways. Um, primarily it was through like a test beta type group, those advisory group people that we brought in. We had about 15 to 20 different companies, so they got a chance to play around with it, give us our feedback. And then it was, from there it was a standard marketing campaign blitz, hey, new analytics visualizations in ZI Access, and it's included. You know, uh, it was primarily email, a uh, little bit on LinkedIn, some social media, but our, well, even direct mail outs, because that's what some people still like to do. Um, we do all of, all of that. You're welcome. Yes. So the question was sending alerts out. Um, we don't have alerts set up on KPIs within Tableau yet. In fact, I'm going to the session, I think it's tomorrow, about data alerts, so maybe. Uh, our alarming right now is just done off of our platform. You'll set thresholds for your different sensors. There's a low level and a high level, and if the latest data comes in is below that threshold, we're going to fire out an email or a text message to our users. And that's typically how our alarming works today. But I am interested. I'm not sure about the customer facing implementation of the data alerts, but I can see us using that internally. Uh, we're looking at uh, adding Salesforce as a data set internally, and so be nice to notify people when the latest opportunity has been marked as closed one, you know, things like that, or on a daily basis, how are we, how close are we to meeting our sales quotas and that sort of thing. Any other questions? No? All right. Thank you for all for coming today. It was a pleasure.